Hey there, it's John here from the Red Dice Diaries, and I'm just doing a quick stream today. Maybe these will take off in future. I might do some more of those, who knows. But I'm going to be talking today about how I do make very simple dungeons for my games. As some of you probably know, I run a hex crawl OSE campaign called Smoke and Snow. And I love hex crawls because the players have this huge sandbox they can wander around in. They can pretty much do whatever they want. But obviously that does mean that as a GM, you have to be ready for wherever they want to go. If they suddenly go, oh, we're going to travel to the east and see what's there on the map, you have to be ready for it. And as you might expect with a sort of D&D based game, there's a lot of dungeons knocking around. And if the player character goes somewhere you really didn't expect and you've for whatever reason you've decided there's a dungeon there but you've not detailed it in full yet it can be a little bit tricky to sort of come up with that on the fly so to speak and there's a few ways you can sort of get around this and you can prepare for it one of the things i like to do is i like to have my players sort of tell me where they're playing to head at the end of the previous session so if they go at the end of session two they go oh i wonder what's what's further north following that river we're going to go there next session i'll prepare stuff in that general direction so we sort of have some stuff ready but there will be times when i've as i've sort of pre-populated roughly where everything is on my map the players will go to a place and i'll be like oh well according to my map there's a dungeon here but i've not actually prepped anything for the dungeon and that could be quite challenging i mean i could improvise it but i'd like to have something a bit more concrete there luckily nowadays there are numerous tools available online that can make this a lot easier for us and i'm going to be looking at how i use a couple of those today just to very quickly put together a dungeon and once you practice to this you can do it in a matter of moments really depending on what exactly you want in your game so first of all as you can sort of see in the the background there we are on the wataboo itch.io page i'll put a link in the description down below to this and wataboo's got loads of really great sort of generators from medieval fantasy cities to village generators 3d city viewers he's got his perilous shores one which makes like a fantasy region and that's absolutely great however for the purposes of this stream we're going to be having a look at this little bad boy here the one page dungeon generator so let's click on that and see what we get okay so as you can see it generates a, a one page simple dungeon you can see we've got the map all nicely laid out there and it gives you some notes that are linked to the room descriptions, just giving you like some brief flavor of what's in there. And you get a cool name for it at the top here. So this one is the Forgotten Asylum of the Spider Lady, a sort of randomly produced name. And then we get a little bit of flavor text underneath here where it says the Asylum of the Spider Lady is situated deep in the jungle, protected by dangerous local fauna and impassable terrain. Recently, an undead man-eating snake has made its home here. Word is that untold treasures of magical artifacts and ancient books are stored here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, as you can see where I've clicked on that, you can actually edit that. So you could type in your own description. If you really didn't like that, you can rename it by just clicking on here and you can type in whatever you want. Now... And you can likewise do that with the, the notes as well. You can edit the notes and we'll get to how you do that in a few moments. But if you right click anywhere on this map, you get a little menu that comes up that allows you to sort of tweak the, the dungeon to fit your particular sort of flavor. So let's say I look at this dungeon, I'm like, oh yeah, great. Forgotten Asylum of the Spider Lady. Love the description, love the map. These notes, however, not so keen i don't need a, an elf muttering gibberish in chamber one i don't need a, a crate holding a key or whatever now i could click on those right click on those and select edit note and i can just type whatever i want in there so let's say i want it to be a dwarf muttering gibberish instead so click okay there and there we go 
Yeah, I can see we've got Johannes in the chat. Thanks for joining us. And you're absolutely right. It is a stellar generator, as are all of his. So you can see that there I've changed that note to a dwarf muttering gibberish. However, if I wasn't sure what I wanted, I just didn't want these, I could right click and I could go for re-roll notes. And it just randomly redetermines all of those notes. And again, these can be edited. But if you select that, you have to be a little bit careful because the re-roll will re-roll all of your notes. So if you've retyped half of them, then you re-roll. You've lost those ones you retype. There's not a great deal you can do about that. Now, if I bring up this menu again, you can also see you've got an option to rearrange notes, and that just sort of moves them and shifts them around the map. I'm not exactly sure how it determines where they're going to end up, but you can click on that until you get them somewhere that you're more comfortable with. We also have notes mode, so you can turn notes off if you just wanted a nice map. That also turns the numbers for the rooms off. You can click on default, which is the one we were looking at a moment ago. Obviously, the numbers have now come back. You can click on tailed, where you get these sort of speech balloons that point to the various chambers, so you don't need the numbers. Now, that might not be so good if you're using it in a virtual tabletop, but you know, if you just wanted to print out the map and you wanted an obvious visual link, that might be your bag. We've also got legend, where you get the map shifted across to the right a bit, and you get the legend on the left here where it just tells you everything so that could be quite useful for a vtt if you wanted to have them sort of out of the way or again if you wanted to just print it and have a nice simple sort of key for the map i suppose and we have numbers which just gives you the numbers it doesn't actually give you the notes i don't think that was an option last time i was on this but it's nice to see that's been put in i'm going to switch it back to the default because that's the one i like to be perfectly honest if we have a look to the next one, you'll see that the next option we've got is rotate to fit. Now, if you click that, it sort of gives you this strange sort of like slanted sort of uh, look at the uh, the dungeon, which, you know, if you printed it, it might be great. For me, though, because I use VTTs, I prefer to like have that clicked off so I can line it up nice and easily with the grid that I'll be using on my VTT of choice. You can select whether to have secret rooms shown or not, although I don't think there's actually any on this map, so it won't show a lot of difference. You can click the monochrome menu option, which will basically get rid of all the coloring and all the shading and make it purely black and white. And then we have the style menu option, which basically allows you to individually change the colors of various bits and pieces on there. And if you click on preset, there's a number of those available. I've currently got it set on the ancient preset. If I click to default, you see everything's changed here. And if I click apply, it changes the color scheme in the background. Let's have a quick look at another one. There's a blackboard option. So if I click apply there, you see it's now, it's almost got like a dark theme to it, which could be great, you know, if you're running like a, an underdark dungeon or something like that that and we've got the modern one which gives you a, a much starker almost i suppose that blueprint sort of style one i'm going to set ours back to the the default because i really like the look of that i think that's cool so let's get rid of that we have layers so you can turn the various different layers on or off so I could turn the grid entirely off if I wanted to. I can change it to a solid grid or various other different types. Let's go with dashed and leave it at that. You can also turn the title and the story off if you want, and it recenters everything. You could turn water off if there's any water in your dungeon. You can turn the props off so the crates disappeared now. And you can it just allows you to fine tune it so you only get what you want. I'm going to turn the title back on because I quite, actually quite like that title. And then we have the final options which allow you to save and export in various formats. Now, one thing to bear in mind, which I didn't realize when I first used this, is if you save it as a PNG, so if I click there, you can see my browser will allow me to just save that as a normal PNG. And that has all the title on it, all the descriptions, all the text boxes and everything like that. However, because of 
I don't know exactly why, but I found that when I saved it in that format and I tried to import it into my VTT, it was a bit of a chore trying to basically sync up the grid on my VTT with the grid that was on the map. And I could have just turned the grid off on um, Waterboo's generator, but that can also be a bit of a pain in the backside because you're trying to line the grid lines up with walls and stuff like that. And I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for myself. So what you can do is you can click on this export as PNG option. And when you click on that, you get this little box here that basically says, how big do you want each square in your grid to be? So if you just click on OK there, it will save the map and each sort of grid square will be 70 pixels by 70 pixels. And that is great. Like I use Foundry VTT and that means when I go in to line the grid up, I can just manually type in, yes, I want this grid to be 70 by 70 pixels and boom, it will automatically fit on straight away. The only thing to bear in mind with this is when you export PNG, you literally just get the map. You don't get the title, the description, you don't get all of the little sort of extra bits and pieces of information. You just get the basic map. So if you're really enamored of the description and the, the notes and the keys and stuff like that, I would advise you to export it as a PNG to put it into your VTT, but also to save a normal copy as PNG so you've got all the notes and everything on it just for your reference. That's how I sort of tend to do it. Alternatively, as I've done in the past sometimes, when like, I didn't really want any of the notes or the title, I just exported it to a PNG, whapped it into my VTT of choice, and then I just manually added my own notes in the VTT sort of around the edges of the map. And that also worked fine. And we've also got export as JSON, which I know is a, a file type, but I, I've got to admit, I don't really know much about that, so I can't really tell you much about that. I don't really use it a great deal. So what I would do, let, let's... Oh, also, by the way, before I go any further, if you don't like this dungeon map, you can select new dungeon here. And boom, there you go. There's another random dungeon. Select it again. There's another one, etc., etc. And it will keep all of the sort of um, preferences that you've set up, like the grid style and stuff like that, until you change them. So quite often, when I want to create a, a simple dungeon for a game, I'll come on here and I'll just click through new dungeon a few times until I get something that I like the sound of or I like the look of and then I'll save that and I normally save two or three while I'm doing it so I can go back and have a look at them and decide which one I want. So for the purposes of this exercise I'm going to stick with this one Maze of the Void Magus. Since the demise of the Void Magus the maze has changed hands many times. Lately a huge sphinx has made its home here. It is rumoured that a legendary compass Harkovar is hidden here. I like that. That sounds good. It's a nice sort of little five-room dungeon. You know, there's a little bit of a, a fountain down here. Little stairs going in. Statue. Couple of notes, but there's also an empty chamber. But obviously we can add stuff in later on if we want for the fountain and whatnot. Cracking. Love it. So what I would do here is I would first of all decide whether I'm happy with everything on there or whether I want to generate some other stuff. And what I'd do for that is, for me personally, because I run old school essentials, I would make use of the designing a dungeon notes that are available online for the old school essentials SRD, system reference documents. And it gives you all these details here about how to stock your dungeon, including like random tables you can roll on if you want to stock them yourselves. And then also there are a number of old school essential generators produced by the publishers of the book Necrotic Gnome, which you can use. They've got, you can generate treasure by dungeon level, by map or by type, various encounter generators, spells, magic items, NPCs, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to the map. I'm going to have a look at the notes we've got on there. So it says a dying halveling a weird, slightly glowing halberd amongst his belongings. I like the sound of that, but I don't really have halvelings, so to speak, in my old school essentials smoke and snow campaign. So I'm gonna right click and go to edit notes, and I'm gonna put the dead body of an ice walker tribesman. 
and I'm going to leave the weird glowing halberd amongst his belongings. And there we go, that's changed and that's now far more suitable for my campaign. Number two is a round door on the western wall of a small chamber. So they're obviously talking about this one here. That's fine, I don't see any problems with that. Now, the only thing I would say is I don't believe there's any way to actually add notes so directly onto this map, which is a, a bit of a shame. You can edit the ones that are there, but I don't think you can add new ones on. Obviously, if anyone knows different, feel free to shout up and let me know. And normally there's a few sort of little instructions below here, but uh, I can't see anything about notes. So what I'm going to do is I would just write down on a, a little scrap of paper. So I'll give myself a little scrap of paper here, grab my pen. If I wanted to add anything extra in, I'd just scroll it down on my piece of paper. And then when I take this into my virtual tabletop, I can add whatever extra notes I want around the side. So we've got two things which I think would be of interest to an adventuring party on this map but that haven't actually been given any notes, so to speak, by the sort of random generation. And those are, of course, the fountain and the statue. So I'm going to try and determine some stuff for them, and I'm going to do that by looking at the Old School Essentials SRD, scroll back down to stocking the dungeon. We already know the dungeon's not empty so what i'm going to do is i'm going to roll a d6 on this table if i get an empty result i'll just say yeah it's just a fountain or whatever if i get a monster there's a creature of some sort defending this place five special or sort of magical or strange things and six is a trap so i'm going to first of all i'm going to roll for the fountain and i'm just going to make a quick note on my piece of paper that i'm rolling for the fountain and I'm going to go to the quick online dice roller. Let's roll a d6 and see what we get. It's a 1, so that's empty. So it's just a fountain. However, as you can see next to it here, there is a chance of treasure being in there. It's a 1 in 6 chance. So let's have a quick roll of this. No, there's no treasure there. That's absolutely fine. So let's roll another d6 to see what's in the statue room. And we've got a two there. So again, that, that really is just a statue in this case. And now you might say, well, that's a bit anticlimactic, John, but that's somehow how it goes when you're doing these sort of random dungeons. I'm going to see if there's a the one in six chance of there being some treasure there. And indeed there is one in six chance. So there's some treasure associated with the statue. So what I would do then is I would scroll down, have a look at the description here where it says treasure. If there's a monster in the room, roll the treasure type indicated in its description. Otherwise, the treasure depends on the dungeon level C below. There's, we know there's no monster in the room, so I'm going to go onto the Old School Essentials Generators page. I'm going to pick treasure by dungeon level. And... Obviously, the dungeon level is a sort of abstract measure of how difficult the dungeon is. So for the purposes of this, I'm just going to assume it's a level one dungeon. So if I click level one here, it tells me that there are 300 silver pieces located in that statue room. Now, obviously, I'll have to sort of decide where they're actually located in the room. I mean, is there like a hidden pedestal underneath the statue? Are they tucked behind it? Whatever. So I'll have to decide that but still it's given me a nice jumping off point and make no mistake although these generators will make things vastly easier for you and they cut down on that sort of manual aspect of it you will still have to do some thinking about it to make sure it fits into your campaign so we've got 300 silver pieces i'm also going to because you can obviously ignore these random results if you want and do what you think is okay for your game I'm going to add a monster into chamber two because there's not really any occupants there at the moment. And you could theme the monster and pick it specifically for your campaign. But sometimes, do you know what? I just like to pick a monster and then sort of work out why it's there and sort of do it the other way around. So I'm going to go encounter 
by Dungeon on the Old School Essentials Classic Fantasy Generators. I'm going to click on level one. Oh, and we've got there's three dwarves in the room. So all I'm going to do is on my piece of paper, I'm going to write down room number two, three dwarves. And that immediately starts me thinking, okay, there's the dead body of an ice war tribesman with his glowing halberd. There's three dwarves, frost dwarves in my campaign, in room two. So what's happened here? Has there been some sort of conflict between the the ice walker tribes in the area, these sort of uh, native tribesmen and these frost dwarves? Is this Does this dungeon now become more of a battlefield? Or we could say, if we look at the description, since it's the Maze of the Void Makers, it's rumoured to have this legendary compass, Hark of Ar, hidden here. What if the, the Ice Walkers and the Frost Dwarves both believe they have a claim to this magical compass, and they are now effectively skirmishing and fighting each other over this compass and the right to enter the, mage, the Maze of the Void Makers? So, for me, I would, I've made my note that there's three Dwarves knocking around in room two i would then i detail them up a little bit and i could use the the old school essentials npc generators like class and level so i could just go oh, give me give me a level one dwarf create click this to change it into short format there i've got the stats for a level one dwarf times that by three there's your three dwarves dealt with give them a smattering of extra equipment or some magical shiz if you want to happy days we've got them in there i would say these dwarves they're probably part of an adventuring party maybe they've fought against these ice walkers so that would suggest there'd be some other ice walker bodies and maybe some dwarf bodies scattered around maybe they're the last three surviving members of their party and they're trying to find this compass thanks very much graham spearing in the chat for saying they look like nice tools and indeed they are great tools i highly recommend anyone checking them out i'll put all the links in the description to this video after we finish doing the stream so you can give them a check out now one thing i will point out is that as we've sort of like been coming up with this little narrative and that's what this is all about building this sort of like narrative around your dungeon stuff for the players to find out to explore to investigate there's no actual mention on the map anywhere of this legendary compass that's supposedly hidden in the maze of the void makers now that's not a problem i can put that anywhere so what i'm going to do is since we've got 300 silver pieces of treasure in the statue room randomly determined by ourselves i'm actually going to cross out that 300 silver pieces and i'm going to replace it with the magical compass now, because it's a, a magical compass, it's a it's this treasured item that everyone's looking for. It's not just going to be lying around the statue's neck because otherwise they'd have found it. I mean, you could say that perhaps they would have found it apart from them fighting between themselves. But I think it's going to be more interesting for me and it gives the players more to do if maybe it's hidden somewhere. So I'm going to say it's concealed in a, a sort of hidden compartment in the base of the statue. And I'm going to say that it is trapped so if we scroll down on the designing a dungeon old school essentials system reference document it gives us a list of example treasure traps and i'm going to roll a d6 to see how it's protected so four illusion typically of a monster the monster has ac9 or 10 if you're using ascending ac like i do and vanishes if hitting combat its attacks do not inflict real damage a pc who appears to die just falls unconscious for 1d4 turns so perhaps this is what's been keeping everyone away from the actual treasure first of all you've got to find the secret compartment and if you start messing around with the statue this phantasmal creature appears and attempts to scare people away from the actual compass and it does it's not really that important what the monster is you've just like come up with some flavor because it's not it's not really there it's an illusion but i'm just going to go back to the generators i'm going to go to encounters for dungeon now normally i'd probably pick something of vaguely appropriate level for this but since this is an illusion that's specifically designed to scare people away i'm going to add a few levels and go for levels four to five there we go and it's a cave bear so i'm going to just write down on my piece of paper that there's an illusionary cave bear so 
whenever someone starts messing around with the statue there's a two in six chance which is standard for OSE that this trap is triggered if the trap is triggered then this huge monstrous bear with bone spurs jutting out of its blood splattered fur appears and starts charging towards whoever's messing with the statue the idea being that it scares them away before they actually have chance to discover the secret compartment underneath so that would be me pretty much done in terms of this dungeon like i said this is only a small one it's just a small sort of five room dungeon but we've already got a bit of a, a narrative built up that you can expand upon later as a gm we know that there's a a tribe of ice walkers in the area we know there's a clan of frost dwarves in the area they've both they both want this compass for some reason you can expand upon that later why do they need this compass what are the powers of the compass obviously we've all probably seen the pirates of the caribbean you know the compass that leads you to your heart's desire maybe it's something like that and each each of these two factions is trying to get it so they can find something different that's their major beef they they both want to get this compass perhaps the players could mediate some sort of arrangement between them if they wanted to to stop the hostilities maybe too much blood's been spilt it depends entirely upon the needs and wants of your game but we're now ready we could just take this map and our notes drop it into our vtt add a couple of little notes about the statue and the dwarves etc you know set up all of the various things you need to set up in vtt's you know like your walls your lighting etc which i won't go into in this stream that'll be a much longer stream but you can put that into your vtt set it up and you are pretty much good to go and by doing it this way you you've pretty much got that narrative in your head you, know, you can maybe make a few notes about it just to remind you in case your players don't get to it for a while but you are pretty much good to rock and roll with this small dungeon and this whole stream so far has taken me half an hour and that's with me explaining stuff and going through all the various different options if you were just doing it yourself and you'd maybe had a bit of practice i think easily within like 10 minutes you could have this dungeon ready slap it in your vtt and you are good to go the wataboo generators are an amazing time saver as are the excellent generators and the srd for old school essentials if you're playing a game with that bx flavor i really cannot recommend them highly enough i use them almost every sort of session when i'm prepping for my games just because it really does save a lot of time and one of the useful things about the the random generation is that it can often spur ideas that you wouldn't have thought of normally so if i'd have just sat here with a blank piece of paper and i'd have tried to create a dungeon like whole cloth so to speak i probably wouldn't have thought of having a maze of the void makers or having a magical compass in there i might not have thought of the ice walkers or the dwarves like clashing over it etc but i certainly wouldn't have ended up with the dungeon i've got now and if i've got another five ten minutes and i know there's some other dungeons in the area i can quickly just click 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 and i can come up with something similar to them and you're expanding your campaign world every time you use it and you try and fit things into your game so that's it for this short stream let me know what you think if you're watching it now or in the future is it worth me doing a, a sort of regular like hour-long saturday session prep stream i was thinking maybe i'd talk a little bit more specifically about the prep i do for my OSE game which unfortunately would rule my players out from watching it i'd hope but if that's something people are interested in seeing let me know obviously i'll put all the links to the generators in the description below and i'll set up chapter points in youtube shortly so you can skip to the bit you want in the video hope you've enjoyed this stream until we see you again take care and i'll catch you next time